Hey YouTube, what is up? Comic Brains here. I'm super excited to be with you guys uh, today. This is uh, my first video for my channel. Pretty excited how uh, things are going. I wanting, I've been wanting to do this for a while, and you know, it was one of my New Year resolutions was to put a, uh, a YouTube channel and comic book feed and enter the the realm of uh, nerds out there, especially the comic book lovers out there. Uh, so yeah, I'm really excited to see how things go. Um, so a little bit about myself. Uh, be calling myself uh, Comic Brains. I've been studying comics for a long time. Uh, you know, comics are always on my mind, and I've been reading them since I was little. I've been collecting heavily for the past five years. Uh, been I kind of fell back for a while. Uh, I'm coming on a five years of sobriety as well too. So I converted my uh, my drinking problem and you know uh, turned it into buying comic books instead so it uh, I just feel a lot better as a person and things are just going a lot better and nothing against drinking but it's just I just took it the wrong path and um, it just I just feel a lot better as a person like I said and, and you know um, if you know you guys drink yeah two those have fun at least just you know have control over it. That's all I have to say. Anyway, enough preaching on that. Um, yeah, so uh, what I'll be doing for my channel is I uh, will be writing uh, comic book pickups, comic book hauls, comic book Wednesdays. Uh, I'll be writing stuff by uh, brains. Um, I'll be going up to 10 brains if everything was just absolutely fantastic, awesome. All the way down to zero, uh, this haul was garbage. Absolutely just just garbage nothing too thrilling uh, more repetitive bullcrap and you know and who knows I might find something nice might bring up the brain rate and uh, you know it's just gonna it's gonna be interesting I'm really excited to see how this how this turns out and um, it was kind of a joke um, as to uh, the whole comic brains thing so uh, I'm pretty, I was like hey I would be kind of it'd be kind of cool to kind of incorporate the name with a kind of a channel so so yeah anyway for my first video another thing I wanted to do this year was put together a comic book room and pretty excited how it's turning out um, so for the first video I decided to uh, show you guys my uh, my room uh, let me know what you guys think leave a comment down below uh, you know actually rate this rate this video on how many brains you think um, give me uh, give me some critique some uh, some ideas um, what you guys think of my collection so far and how I'm doing on my room so yeah give me a uh, give me a brain rate that would be awesome so anyway yeah let's uh, jump right into it uh, starting uh, I put these up I'm a huge David Finch fan I uh, love his work uh, even when he started doing stuff with Top Cow and Image and all that um, Especially his connecting set through 208, through 212, X Men Legacy is just so awesome. I love his work, and it's just it's so rugged. Uh, and I even love his work too. Um, stuff he does with Batman and Moon Knight uh, is pretty awesome. Aphrodite, his stuff with Aphrodite was pretty good too. He did some pretty good female work. Cool poster. My. Spawn number nine, first parents of Angela and Medieval Spawn. Shout out to uh, Bruce Zayas. Uh, you can check his stuff out on his YouTube channel. Um, he's a uh, guy down here that I uh, I chat with and do comic book trades. So great guy. He just started doing videos too. So go ahead and uh, check his stuff out too. He's got a lot of neat stuff. <coughs> Um, all for this poster. I actually have three copies of Spawn Number Nine, so I went and pulled out the poster really nice and put it in the frame. I thought that would sit really nice next to that. Over here, got my X Men 304 autographed by Dan Panossian. I think that's right, Dan Panossian. His stuff with X Men was pretty good too, and I love the Fatal Attraction series. That was pretty iconic, especially it having to deal with uh, Magneto pulling out his uh, animantium. And I got the COA to go with it too, so that sit really nice together with the frame. So, I'm obviously a huge X-Men fan. 
uh, I grew up with X Men. I'm a '90s kid, so you know X Men was was the shit. Uh, I got most of the one through sixty six, but I'm I'm only missing thirteen issues. I'm so close to completing my one through sixty six. Obviously missing the one through three and a couple of the single issues. Uh, but I uh, I decided just to put all my favorites on the wall. Kind of ran out of room, so I just kind of put my favorites up there. And the other ones are put away. But I put a uh, a sealant strip all across the wall and the uh, the baseboard right here too, and they uh, they sit flat against the uh, the wall, and I don't have to worry about them tipping over or anything like that. They're they're stuck on there pretty good, and I thought that was going to be really neat. And as for the wallpaper too, actually, uh, I have I bought a uh, I have a long box of a bunch of just 50 cent, 75 cent uh, comics. I'm actually going to replace the wallpaper, and the girlfriend and I are going to just go crazy. We're just going to tack up random pages, cool pages, and just cheap comic books, and we're just going to do the whole wallpaper. It's going to look so cool. Pretty excited. We'll probably shoot a video on the final. Uh, final turnaround but this is what I have so far but anyway yeah we'll start off with my my favorite X-Men obviously got that X-Men number four uh, first Quicksilver Scarlet Witch Evil Mutants and second Magneto great comic worked really hard to get that one X-Men number nine first full Avengers crossover you got the Khazar Juggernaut and the Sentinels any X-Men fan most definitely got to seek and grab those. Another thing I like to, uh, um, you know, that I like to talk about too is I'm not afraid to buy in low-graded copies. These aren't, you know, these are really the low-mid-grade copies. But, you know, I never know when I'm going to come across you know, a super nice one or, or even just be able to afford one. So if, if you guys are ever sinking out key issues and you find a low-graded copy, don't be afraid to grab it. Because, you know, the fact that you have it in your collection, you know, that's that should be the important part. And then, you know, when you start saving up or if you get a little bit more money, then you can go out and, you know, upgrade, buy yourself a nicer copy. So, yeah, just uh, my own, own personal note, just, yeah, don't be afraid to buy low grade. It's, I, uh, I do it all the time. Um, anyway, uh, get back into it. Uh, 28, first Banshee, Juggernaut, he's... Uh, one of my favorite villains, 32 and 33. Neat thing with Juggernaut, he only made five appearances through uh, 1 through 66. Obviously, he made his big premiere in um, in issue 12 and then 13. And then this one, issue is 32 and then 33. And then he made his appearance, um, his last appearance over in um, X-Men 46. So, yeah, I just love that color. It's so cool. So 60s. Uh, but, oh yeah, we got 45, 44, 43, 42, 41, 40. Frankenstein. Frankenstein appearance. Not his first appearance, but, because um, this one was actually, a, it was a robot, I believe. I haven't read it in a long time. But, still a great cover. So, yeah, those are my Juggernaut appearances. Uh, I think he was one of my favorite villains growing up, so I you know, gotta, gotta try to seek out and grab him all. Uh, this X Men number 38. Um, this was actually a big issue. This was the beginning story uh, um, in the X Men titles that started doing uh, the origin. Uh, stories inside of them kind of give you a rundown the background stories of each X-Men characters and it ran all the way up to issue uh, I want to say 57 which was the uh, a big issue with Havoc so that's pretty cool and then you gotta have the uh, Amazing Adventures number 11 um, origin on how Beast got his fur super great copy uh, I probably gave it uh, probably a 7.5, strong 7.5. Pretty happy with it. Got a really good price for it, so I can't complain. Um, okay, so another 
uh, background of myself. I am a graphic artist. I uh, I illustrate um, you know anything really um, on the side. Uh, comic book work, uh, commission paints, and um, all that fun stuff. Um, but I illustrated this back in 2013. I uh, draw my um, some of my favorite. I wish I could fit everybody on there, but I would need a bigger piece of paper. But I just picked six uh, six of my favorite. Um, I was gonna put Chris Claremont on there, but I I'm saving another drawing for him. So, but anyway, I got John Romita, Steve Ditko, Stan Lee, Jack the King, Joe Simon, and Joe Sinnott. Uh, I illustrated them all sitting at one table. You know, kind of just waiting to, for stuff for people to come up and get things signed. And I illustrated all the uh, iconic characters in the background. And it, it turned out really nice. It took me about eight, ten hours. Uh, super excited on how it turned out. And I took it to uh, Wizard World and had Stanley sign it. And he absolutely loved it. We actually talked for a couple minutes before I got shooed out of line. <laughs> That's, uh, that's how it is with conventions, but he thought it was awesome, and he thought it was one of the neatest things you've seen in a while, so, yeah, I was pretty, pretty happy with that. And, uh, I would really love to get the signatures for all these guys, but we know Kirby and Simon aren't with us anymore, and I don't think Sinnott does any, he doesn't do conventions, and, and all these guys are getting old, too, so, and John Romita, and... God forbid we'll ever get a Steve Ditko autograph, but, yeah, we can dream, right? So, anyway, yeah, let me know what you guys think of that. I'm trying to do one for uh, all the uh, iconic comic book publishers out there, so people that worked on Valiant, I want to put one together for them. Uh, Image, obviously, um, part of Top Cow as well. I want to do one with uh, DC and Jim Lee, and, you know, I, I got some great things. Um to uh, head in the way and almost definitely we'll be doing a uh, video updates for those too as well for when I get those done and completed so pretty excited let me know uh, what you guys think of it if you guys want to see more if you guys got ideas uh, let me know that would be awesome um, more X-Men's my favorites uh, sorry about the glare uh, the nightmare of uh Top loaders and never ending glare. <laughs> I'm pretty excited with those 55, 53, 52, 51. And then you gotta have the Saurons uh, 60 and 61. Great issues, great comics. And then I just love this cover. It's one of the reprints 85, I believe it was a uh, reprint issue of number 37. It's a great one. I love that one. And come over here. Um, I'm absolutely a huge uh, homage and cover swipe fan, so I love it when they when they do that and they throw something out. Uh, it's already been um, represented by iconic issue, so figure I'd start off with this one. This is a uh, obviously the Hulk 340 and 226. Those are great. I love I love cover swipes. I just think they're so freaking awesome. Um. Kind of just threw this up here. I'm probably this is only temporary for right now, but I play Hero Clicks. I actually have uh, I just tried out the uh, the Inhumans um, Inhuman set, so it was all right. Um, I got a, a few more that uh, worked better with those, but it was fun. I had a fun time. But I want to build a shelf with all my King Size Special Number Ones. I'm working on trying to get the rest of them. I got a Submariner. Uh, on its way t so I can go ahead and stick that up here but <clears throat> for right now we got the uh, Daredevil King Size Special number one Marvel Team Up King Size Annual uh, number one and then you got Marvel's uh, very first one shot uh, I believe correct me if I'm wrong but I believe this was their very first one shot so uh, King Size Special Marvel Superheroes number one <clears throat> and then you got the obviously got to have the uh, king size special incredible hulk number one great comic i got a super good price for that too so that's pretty awesome <coughs> <clears throat>
Well, I apologize for you guys. <clears throat> Season change, kind of getting croggy. Um, Going to have some graded. Um, love the Inferno series. That's one of my favorite storylines that involved the mutants. Uh, they had it all. They had a lot to do with the X-Men. Um, I loved it when they, they intertwined all their uh, their series and made one big uh, one big storyline. You know, it grabbed people's attention and you know it helped the buyers. You know, buy their other titles and stuff. And anything with Mister Sinister, uh, I try to get my hands on. He's just absolutely one of my other favorite villains. I, I just love that. So so iconic. He is such a powerful villain. Um, girlfriend, I uh, just recently picked these up for her. These are all, uh, all four of the uh, Alice in Wonderland pops. So, i got to gotta keep the girlfriend happy with nerdy stuff. So, <laughs> um, One of the biggest things I love collecting, um, he's one of the reasons why I became an artist, um, is Michael Turner. Um, anything by him um, is a key issue to me. I love his work. Um, you know, he, his stuff will always be iconic and top of my list. So I know his stuff isn't very expensive, but I, I love to try to grab as much stuff as I can by him. I want to try to collect everything he's done. I'm working on it. I have about, I'm pretty close to, uh, 123 covers that he's illustrated. And, uh, he's credited over 600 things. So I'm, uh. I'm really working on trying to get everything. That's one of my life goals is try to get everything. But anyway, this is a this is the VIP exclusive uh, limited edition of 1000. This is a uh, shrugged number three, uh, 9.8 autographed by Michael Turner. Super excited to finally uh, get that. Uh, shrugged is one of my favorite series. I, I love it. Such a good story line. If you haven't read it, uh, most definitely pick it up. It's fairly inexpensive. Probably find a trade paperback at your local comic book store for 10, 20 bucks. And highly recommend it. Great, uh, great ventures. Uh, and then another one of my other favorite uh, storylines. It's the Fall of the Mutants. I had to kind of deal with Archangel. That's pretty sweet. And actually, Fall of the Mutants uh, X Factor, you know, number 24 was, you know, 23 and 24 Fall of the Mutants storyline introduced Archangel. So, pretty happy with that one. Uh, this is kind of uh, getting the girlfriend shelf put together. She loves the uh, Harley's Little Black Book variant, so I've been trying to seek out all those ones. Uh, but luckily, I've been able to grab the. Uh, um, you know, the sketch variants, I think they're a lot cooler, and she really likes them too. I'll get the color ones eventually, but uh, I just, you know, we, we both agree that we like the sketch variants and the, the inked ones. And she obviously loves the Scotty Young baby uh, variant covers, so those are really sweet. And more pops, her favorite. That's pretty cool. Uh, got more comics I gotta put away. Like I said, I'm still working on my room. Uh, this is my Nick Fury stack. Save that for another video. But that's, uh, you know. Got this with a, as a trade with Bruce. Uh, another shout out to him. Uh, huge Nick Fury fan. This was the um, first appearance and death of Bullseye. Um, not to be confused with Daredevil's Bullseye, but this was his, uh, this one's first appearance. And the death of Nick Fury in his series. Uh, 16, 17, 18 were reprints, but with just different covers. So, super nice. I really enjoy that one. These are all my Psylocke variants. I can save that for another video. Um, kind of want to do a Psylocke uh, video, uh, especially with X-Men coming out. I'm going to get some graded stuff. Uh, these are my autographs. Some of my autographs I have to put away. Um, Portasio 185 Headless Spawn autographed. House of M Day After Chris Claremont signature. Dustin Wynn. This is one of his first series. Uh, I love the Wildcats, and this was a 3.0. This was the uh, version 3 
number one um, autographed. And uh, I just think this show is so ridiculous, but I uh, I got it. Uh, uh, nickel. This is a uh, Axe Cop number one. I <laughs> got that autographed. I think that's so cool. I think it's such a fun series. I think that's so cool. If you guys haven't, check it out. It's super fun. Uh, more comics, like I said, got put away. Um, New Mutants graphic novel, or the uh, graphic novel number four, First Prince of New Mutants. Another Michael Turner variant. This was uh, one of his last stuff he did before he passed, 2008, before he passed away. But Incredible Hulk number seven, 9.8. Can't go wrong with a 9.8. And I'm not too upset when, uh, you know, uh, with graded comics, you know, as long as they come back between a 9 to a 9.8, and I'm fairly happy because they're mo mainly going for my collection. And if I ever get the money, uh, you know, to get more repetitive stuff, then yeah, I was they'll uh, sell them and flip them and use that to get more comics. But for right now, you know, most of the stuff I get graded are for me, so I'm not too worried as long as it comes back a nine or a ten. This was a uh, Top Cow did a series of black and white sketch covers. This one was pretty neat. It's a Dynamic Forces sketch variant, Fathom. More comics put away. Uh, more stuff on the shelf. This is Danger Girl. Uh, J. Scott Campbell's Danger Girl. Got to have the revolver connecting uh, connecting variants. I also love connecting variants. I think they're so cool. And then uh, this is really neat too. I got this off Craigslist for ten bucks. Still in the uh, still in the plastic too. This is the uh, Todd McFarlane uh, McFarlane Toys Danger Girl uh, fish tank set of uh, J. Scott Campbell's variant, uh, rendition of uh, of his girls. Yeah. So cool. That's cool. And I was like, 10 bucks, why not? Absolutely. Especially being a fan of his work, so I had to grab it. Yeah, gotta have... Uh, these are for uh, the girlfriend and I. She actually got this for me for Christmas, so super excited to have that one. But that's the 1 in 50. Renew Your Vows uh, Campbell variant, and then uh, also the Renew Your Vows uh, Scotty Young variant. Uh, girlfriend loves that cover so much, so I think it's pretty cool. It's cute. It's fun. So, but I'd rather go with this one. So <laughs> anyway, so yeah, I got more stuff on the wall. I got Frank Miller's Daredevil one through five. Great series, great artwork, absolutely love that. So iconic, his Daredevil stuff was just so great. Um, cool Avengers poster. I picked. Uh, I was actually at a Walmart one day. They were wheeling that out to the recycling, and I stopped them and I, was, and I asked them. I was like, "Are you gonna, you know, can I have that?" And they said they're just gonna toss it. So I took it home, trimmed it up really nice, and uh, you know, I want to get a frame for it, but that's gonna be super expensive and. You know, one day, one day I'll get it. So, but I figured it'd be a good, uh, good start to the comic book room. Got more long boxes. Uh, let me save this for another video. But this is a uh, all my Todd McFarlane and uh, Michael Turner variants, and, and you know all this Fathom, and I got a bunch of autograph spawns in here too. I need to uh, send out. Um, so, uh, Brian Harberlin, uh autographed down there on the bottom. Can you see that? Um, this was his very first ever color work with Spawn. I was pretty excited. And, um, like I said, I got tons of. Oh, well, there's my Angelos. Number nine. Number nine. And there's that beater up one I found, and I pulled the poster out. And I found it at Goodwill, so for a quarter. So couldn't go wrong with that. I picked it up. So more comics. This is that long box we picked up that we're going to use for uh, comics. I'm just going to go through it again just to make sure there isn't any key issues in there that I'm going to rip open. <laughs> that would suck. But, you know, I guess I'd just make that more of an expensive wallpaper. 
Sorry about it. It's a pretty long video. Um, thanks for sticking with me, you guys. Appreciate uh, you guys checking me out, checking my videos. Um, you know, uh, hope looking forward to uh, meeting uh, meeting you guys and uh, entering the the realm of nerds and comic book lovers out there. So, uh, first appearance of Witchblade, uh, Sideblade and Shy. This is actually uh, a variant cover. Uh, a painted cover that was on a canvas so that was really sweet. Love that one. Gotta have the Michael Turner's Witchblade number one. Super nice copy. Um, I'm gonna send that off to uh, to get graded. Beautiful sharp corners. The spine is absolutely just fantastic. I just I just love it so much. So, and then uh, this year, um, you know, for my grading services, I'm probably going to switch over to uh, PGX. I'm going to try them out for a year. Uh, then I'm going to do uh, CBCS, and I've done CGC, but I just want to, um, you know, I just want to see how PGX does. And I hear good things about them, especially I have a lot of Michael Turner autograph stuff that I need to get sent off. CBCS does the uh, authentic. Uh, Signature authentication, uh, so does PGX, and I call it PGX, and um, I just like their turnaround, so we'll see how well they do, and then um, most definitely I'll send a few things to uh, CBCS, see how they do too. But uh, yeah, I want to try PGX. They're from my hometown, so I figured I would give them give them a shot. So and uh, you know, let me know what you guys think of the whole grading services. Um, I know that's a big thing lately, and I think it's just a personal preference on what you like, and I just I feel if it's graded a 9.6 by someone else, and you know the other company grades it at 9.6, you have a 9.6. That's that's how it is, you know. You got a 9.6 comic. It's you know might be a little bit more, might be a little bit less, but hey, you have a 9.6 comic book. I'm just stating, so you know should be should be happy. So we have all we have our opinions and. Our likes and dislikes. Speaking of autographed, this is a uh, Witchblade number six autographed by uh, Michael Turner. Uh, autographed, super, super beautiful cover. I just loved his work. His, his, uh, his take after uh, Randy Quinn was just awesome. He did great stuff. So, really excited on, uh, you know, just to see how his stuff. It's sad that he doesn't, he's not with us anymore, but he left his mark and his trademark, so I will I will always be a fan. Vintage X Men poster. I've had that for years. It's been well loved. But anyway, you guys, that is the start to my comic book room and my channel. I hope you guys uh, hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, thanks for watching. Super excited to hear you guys' feedback and um, you know future notes on what you guys want to see in the near future. Uh, this is part of my collection. I got a lot more neat stuff on the way. And, you know, mainly this channel is just going to be uh, stuff that I love and stuff that uh, you know that means means a lot to me or stuff that I like. You know, I'm I want to get into key issues. Uh, a lot of key issues I want to get this year, but you know, eBay is just it's just it's just hot. Things are just blowing up, super hot, super expensive. So, you know, if it comes around my path, I'll, I'll grab it most definitely. Um, but uh, yeah, I'm just gonna stick to this. You know, if I see a freaking three dollar cover that's just badass that I love, then I'm gonna buy it. Um, it's just how I am. You know, I collect what I love. So, anyway, yeah, uh, shout out uh, to all you guys. Um, thanks for watching, and um, until uh, next time. Keep it nerdy and uh, comic brains out.